Hi, this is Joe from Joe's Tech Bits, here with another video. I haven't done one in a while, but I came with came up with a good idea, hopefully for this one, for anyone that wants to watch movies or listen to music, but especially what I use it for is listening to audiobooks, and it works real well with the Jellyfin server. What I'd like to show you is how to install it, put, put videos and music into the server, and especially audiobooks. You can get free items from several websites that I will show you that are not copyrighted, and you actually can get a lot of them and also, if you have CDs or DVDs, you can do what's called rip them. As long as you own the CD or DVD, it's perfectly legal. You can rip the data from the CD onto your computer and add it to your Jellyfin server. So there's a lot of different possibilities with this. Anyhow, hopefully you will enjoy this video, and here we go. I'd like to show you how to download and install the Jellyfin server. Easiest way to find it is to do a Google on Jellyfin server, and you see the first hit we have is the Jellyfin site. We'll go there. And on the main page, you have several different options up top here. But what you can do from the buttons is you can see, see it in action, see how it works. Or you can just go to the download now. For this video, I'd like to show you how it works. If you go to their server and put in the username demo, with no password and sign in, you can see what the server looks like on your system. You can have movies, music, TV shows, and also audiobooks. Audiobooks will be the main topic on this video I'd like to cover, but you can see you can do a lot of other things with Jellyfin. Now, in order to run audiobooks, you need a plugin which is free, just like Jellyfin, called Bookshelf. And then you're able to run audiobooks and ebooks, like EPUB, I believe. So that's the way you can see, and you can play around with it and see what the server actually looks like on your system. But let's go download it. We'll get back to the main page. Oh, before we do that, let's look down here are some of the uses for Jellyfin. You can play music. They even have a live TV and DVR function, which I haven't tried yet, but uh, I will one of these times. You can do movies, shows, photos, books, and you can share movies with other people to watch. I also have clients. You can have a client for these various devices so that you can view your server once it's installed. Let's go back up and download it. I see you can do Linux a Linux server, Windows, Mac OS, or you can even get a Docker version. And if we go here, you can see the different clients too. You can download them right here. But let's concentrate on the server and Windows. And we'll take the top one. There's also a portable version, but we'll take this top one 
will go to downloads. And I've looked at these. It looks like the latest one is April 2023. Oh, wait, there's June. But this is the one we want, the EXE. That's the latest EXE that I could see. Maybe you'll see a better one. We'll download that. And I have a folder set up for Jellyfin items. We will download that. Once our exe file is downloaded, we can find it in the folder we saved it in. And we just have to double click on it to run it. And we will Hit next, agree to the GNU license. I agree, basic install. We'll say next, and this is where it's going to be installed. If you have a different area you want to install it, you can change it right here to a browse. Now I have it installed, I'm installing it on this system I'm on right now, but I have it installed two other places. I have it on a Raspberry Pi running the server and I also have it on a small mini Windows 11 PC and it works fine on both of those. So, but you can just run it right off your computer that you're currently working on and then just access it through another device. So we'll hit next and install. It will go through and install. And once it's installed, we can go to the setup and I'll show you how to add add items to the server. Looks like it's finished. We'll close that. And next we'll set up the server. Before I show you how to set up the Jellyfin server, I'd like to show you where you can get some free audiobooks. The first site I brought up here, I googled LibreVox. Here it is right here. And here's the hit here, the first hit. If we select that, it takes us to LibreVox. And we can see you can be a volunteer to read books and record them for the uh, for the library here and put them in the free library. Or you can go and look at the catalog and look for the free audio books. Now you can see you can look by author, you can look by title, genre, and language. Well, I think it's usually easy enough to look by genre because you can see all the things they have. Children's fiction, a lot of children's fiction, nonfiction, classics, crime and mystery. If we go there, you can see they have many, many books. And although these are public domain books, you don't have to worry about any copyright problems with them. They are public domain, but there's a lot of books and a lot of good ones. Here's one here. Now you can download it directly here and save it on a computer. Or you can go in here and get more information about it. 
and you could actually listen to it right on here. And you can see, you just hit the, the start button here. And this one is set up, looks like, by chapters. Or maybe it's, it could be the different books. It shows the time, 37 minutes, 28 minutes, 31. And if we go back, if you wanted to download one of these books, you just click download and it'll take you through the download process. Well, let's go back. That's the first one. There's other ones around too. If you Google free audio books, you'll find a few more. Here's the second one I found, Internet Archive. If you see at the top here, how many books uh, came up. But if we go and go into the site, you see not only do they have books, but they have oh, these, I think these are the the where areas you can get, you can actually borrow from libraries or download either one. They even have podcasts. I believe they have movies. So if we go in, oh, okay. You go here, you can go on the web, you can get text files, videos, audio, TV, software, images, concerts, and finally collections so even if you went to software right here you can see besides any kind of audio books you can download some software but that's not the focus of this video so let's go into the audio and you know notice LibriVox is one of the sites they have a link to here but you can go into any number of subjects here Old time radio, here's a good one. Now these are more like podcasts, but you can actually go in. Here's yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a pretty, pretty good detective series. He's an insurance investigator. Now, suppose you wanted this one here. Now, it'll take you to this page. You can listen to the individual chapters or pieces. But if you wanted to download it and put it on your Jellyfin server, you have different download options. Here's MP3 files. Now there's 193, I think it said, files. That's a lot of files. But you can just download, hit the download button, and oh, I'm sorry, it's 179 files. You can hit the download button and it will download the files right to your computer. So there are ways to get a lot of free audio files, audio books, podcasts, all kind of things. And like I said, they're pretty much public domain. So that will be a way you can load up your Jellyfin server.
The first start in the setup process is setting up an area where you're going to save your media. It could be on your computer, an attached external drive or a NAS drive network storage, but it could be anywhere that you can access from the server. So what I did, I just set up for an example, a folder called Jellyfin Media. So within that folder, what you're going to want to do is set up different folders. You're going to set up a music. And again, this depends on okay, audiobooks. Depends on what kind of media you're going to use and put in your folder here. Let's say movies. And podcasts, we'll say. So what now you have to do is connect the server to these folders for the different categories. But before you do that, it'd be a good idea to put some movies, music, or whatever into these folders. I'm taking you back to my Jellyfin media folder that I created to show you that I loaded it up some f with some files. You see I have audiobooks and there's a bunch of files here all in chapter format and have a few movies in here. Uh, got most of these. I got all of these files actually from either LibreVox or Internet Archive. And as far as I know, they're all public domain or are free to do whatever. So if we go back to music, you'll see, actually I got a Taylor Swift folder, but you notice they're all sample sample uh, tracks. I think they're mostly about 30 seconds each, but that doesn't mean you can't find some actual really full length music uh, tracks on there. But the th one thing you might run into Here's my podcast. If you go into uh, one of the sites and download multiple files, they'll probably come down in a zip file, which is what's here. So what you need to do is put them in your folder. And then if you right click on it, you can either use the Windows extraction tool or I, I use 7-zip because it handles many different kinds of formats uh, and you can go in and actually see what's in there first you can see there's a lot of files in this one zip file so if we go in and either extract all with Windows or with 7-zip like I'm doing, we do that. And it's going to go through and extract all those single files out of that one zip file. And it's going along, it's almost there.
There we go, it looks like it's done. Now if you look at the folder that was created, we have all our files here. And these are happen to be podcasts of the uh, Yours Truly Johnny Dollar series that was on the radio way back when. What you can do then is if you don't, you probably don't need the zip file, you can just delete that. Or unless you want to save it in an archive somewhere. But I don't see any point to keeping it. Uh, so now we have four of our folders loaded up with files. Now we can actually go in and set up our server. What we're interested in is the, the Jellyfin Tray app. So we click on that and it puts the Jellyfin icon here in the tray. Actually, we have two of them because I clicked on it. We don't need two of them. Actually, I think when you install it, it just puts it in the tray automatically. But you can go here and find the Jellyfin icon and right click. And you can see auto start is automatically checked. So it'll start up when you start Windows. If you don't have that on, you can start Jellyfin automatic you know manually clicking start jellyfin or you can stop it but let's say start jellyfin and we'll right click again and we'll open jellyfin now when you first open it the first time you're going to have some setup so let's go through these. There's a quick start guide if you need help. We want to pick the language. We'll pick English as the preferred. And then tell us about yourself. Uh, we don't want any notifications. We'll block that. But we're going to have a name a username so let, this user is named studio so we'll leave it at studio you don't need a password although you can put a password in but if you do you put a password and then confirm it we're going to leave the password blank now here's where you go we're already ready to set up a media library so we'll click on that and let's go with our movies first and we're going to add a folder and it's on our D drive and we're going to go down to Jellyfin Media and movies. And that's going to be our folder for our movies. And we click OK. Oh, before we do that, you can set up a preferred language here again for that folder. We'll pick English and United States, of course. Okay, now we have one folder set up and one library. Now, before I set out any more up, let's hit next. And again, they're going to ask for 
the language and the country. Set up remote access. We'll say yes. We want to allow remote connections to the server. We'll just leave this second one without checking it. And we're almost done. We'll just click the finish button. Okay. We're ready to sign in. So if you remember our sign in, our user was studio. And we'll always click remember me and click sign in. And there we go. Actually, it's showing the movies we downloaded. But before we set up our audiobooks, we had to do one thing. If we go to the menu here, we'll go to the dashboard and go all the way down to plugins. To use books or audiobooks, we need the audio book plugin called Bookshelf. The audio plugin is called book Bookshelf. These plugins that are showing up here are the ones that are currently installed, but we need to go to the catalog and look for the Bookshelf plugin, which is right here. We'll click Bookshelf. And we're going to just click install. And it has successfully been installed pretty quick. That's free. Now we can go back to the dashboard. Now if we go to home, we'll, we'll see what we've done already with the movies only. Let's go back to the dashboard again and libraries. And we're going to add a media library. Now we're going to do the audio books. So we're going to select books for the content type. And we're going to call this one. We can change the name audiobooks and as far as the folder we want again it's on my D drive and it's down in the jellyfin media folder and it's in the audiobooks and you can actually see the items are in the audiobooks we'll click OK and OK again. Now we have two libraries set up. We have two more to go. We're going to do music. And we'll call it music. And we're going to go to our D drive again where our Media is located, music, and we'll say OK, and we'll do one more. We're going to do podcasts. There is no content type podcast, but since they're mostly MP3s, we'll call it music, and we're going to call this podcasts. And we'll go to the folder, D, Jellyfin, and Podcasts. And you see we have a folder in there with all the podcasts. Say OK and OK. Now, if we go back to the dashboard, we can, you can see here it says scan media library. It looks like it automatically started scanning. It'll go out and scan all the files that are in our libraries 
and try and get some metadata that it can display. So let's go back, go back home, and we'll see if we go to music. Here's our three music, I guess you could call them albums. We'll go back again. Here's our movies. Audiobooks. Here's our audiobooks. You notice they're in folders, so you can go in and there's all the chapters within the book. If you play all, it'll go through and start from the first one and go through. One nice thing, it'll remember where you left off. So you can start a book and go back the next day and pick it up where you left off. Here's our podcast. And there's a folder there and it shows all the different items in that folder, all the different tracks. And to play it, or she just- From Hollywood, Hollywood it's, it's time, time now for- Johnny Dillon. And that's the way you play it. Very easy to do. Next, I will show you how to set up a playlist. Now, in order to set up a playlist, one thing you have to do is go over to the category that you want the playlist. And when you hover over it, you'll see the three dot menu come up. If you click on that, you'll see one of the choices is add to playlist. I click on that and it's going to be a new playlist. We're going to name this because if you go right from the main, main choice, main topic, it's going to include everything within that in the playlist. So we're going to call this all podcasts. And we're going to add. Now you can see what happened to the all podcasts. It added everything here. Well, I may not want to do that because I can play all of the items uh, without creating a playlist, but with it in a playlist, I have other choices. I can click this and shuffle, shuffle my tracks so it'll randomly pick tracks to play one after the other. Now, let's go into the, into the podcast and look at the items. This is not the playlist. This is just into the podcast option. And you can see Next to each track, we have a three menu, three dot menu. And again, one of the items in there is add to playlist. But instead of adding everything in this category, we're just adding the one track. So we're going to call this favorites. Well, let's call it favorite podcasts. Now you see we have one item in there. Now suppose you have another favorite on another disc. We can add this. Now, since we already have the playlist set up, we don't have to give it a new name, we can just select 
the name from here and add it. Then let's put one more and we'll say add to playlist and we'll add it to favorite podcasts. Now if we go back to home you can see we have besides our main categories we have a playlist option here and if we click that we have two playlists. We have all podcasts. If we look at that, we have 179 tracks and it's going to play for 71 hours and 49 minutes. Gives those kind of statistics. And you can actually click on the shuffle button and it'll start playing and just randomly pick tracks. If we go back to the one, the favorites one we did, there's the three favorites we, we picked and we could either randomize them or just start playing at the top by hitting the play button here. And it'll start with the first one and play down through. Now the other thing you can do is let's go to music and say you, you have a John Coltrane track here. You can mix playlists. If we go to this first track, add to playlist. There's favorite podcast. Suppose we want to add that to our podcast playlist. So now if we go to favorite podcasts, We'll see, we added that John Coltrane item right here. And that's the way to set up a playlist. And you can, like I said, you can mix and match between playlists. One other thing you might need to know is the favorites heart. If you go and hover over a movie, there's a heart. Now what happens if you click the heart, it turns red. And let's go back to an, which means it's a favorite. Let's go back to, say music. And we want to click a heart on this album. Then we'll go back and go to a playlist. We want to have our favorite podcasts in the favorites section. So we'll click the heart. And then what happens if we go back, you notice there's a home button and a favorites button. We'll click the favorites and what it does, everything that you click the heart on gets put in the favorites screen. So it's another easy way to group different tracks or albums or whatever together that you probably will listen to frequently. There are several different ways you can get to your local Jellyfin server. One of the ways is to go to the icon and right click and you can open it. If that's not there for some reason, you can go to the address bar and put in your local ad, uh, IP address, which is generally 127.0.0.1 and then attach the port number of 8096, which is the port that Jellyfin defaults to. You can always change it in your router, but this is the one that Jellyfin uses when you install it. If you put that address in, 
it'll take you to Jellyfin. That's the local IP address for your Jellyfin server and port number. Now, you can also put the IP address of your your network IP address of your local machine in that address bar. And the way you would do that, first you have to find your IP address. So if you go to settings, which is the little gear icon here and you go to network and internet and here's your network status if you're on Wi-Fi you can click Wi-Fi if you're on Ethernet you can click that I happen to be on both here so I'm going to click Ethernet and if I click on the network here, it'll bring my network information up. And if you scroll to the bottom, we want the IPv4 address, which is right here. And we'll copy that. And let's go back here. If I was on Wi-Fi, which I am also, I believe. I can go here to my Wi-Fi connection and again look for my IPv4 address, which is here. Once you have the IP address, you can go back to your browser We'll just paste that in that we copied. And then you just have to put the a colon and the 8096 port number and hit enter. And there we go. Took us right to Jellyfin. We just have to sign in. And we're there. The next thing, once you have your server set up on whatever machine, don't forget you can put it on a Raspberry Pi, on a Mac, on a Linux machine, on a Windows machine. Once you install it, it, it pretty much runs without any uh, problem and no maintenance or anything on it. You just have to add your, add your media to it and you're good to go. But if we go back now to the Jellyfin website, jellyfin.org, I wanted to show you what you can do next. You need to find a client and Jellyfin clients run just on, on about any kind of device. You can see you have a web client, desktop, Android, Apple, Amazon, even Roku, and you can add Jellyfin to Kodi and play things. Well, let's see what the and more says. There's a whole bunch. Web OS, even Android TV, which is different than Android. It's got a Play Store, but it's more limited. So now if we go to Apple, say, You can go to the App Store on your device, which is probably easier rather than doing it from here. And there's a Jellyfin Mobile for iOS. There's also a third-party app, which I'm not sure 
which you need to pay for, but it looks like it runs on iOS and Apple TV. Now, if you go over to Android, there's a Jellyfin for Android, and there's one for Android TV. But you can either go to the Play Store, you can go, if you have a Fire Stick or Fire TV type thing, you can go to the Amazon App Store and find it or to F-Droid. Not sure what F-Droid is, but it's probably another site you can download apps. And of course the Roku, you can go on and add a channel to your Roku app. In fact, you could probably add it right here. There it is right there. If you sign into your Roku app store, channel store actually, sign in, you can add this channel right to your Roku right from here. And let's go to the desktop. Here's the Jellyfin Media Player. You can go to GitHub and download it right from there. And here's the Linux versions, a Mac version, and a Windows version. After trying many clients, I've found that not all clients support all audiobook formats. You can always be safe with MP3 because you can always play mp3s in audiobooks, podcasts, and your music files. Some clients will support M4A, M4B, and FLAC also, but I would go with the mp3. And that should be a good uh, start defining your client. Getting the Jellyfin app on Android is very easy. It's right in the Play Store. If you go to the Play Store and search on Jellyfin, as you can see I did up here, and we have the Jellyfin app come up right at the top. I already have it installed, so I get an open, but if, if you didn't have it installed, you would get the install button. So let's open it and see. And I already had the server set up, so it takes me right there. We can change the server. Pressing server and just in this box, just put in the IP address of your server, a colon, and the port that the server's on, which is usually 8096. And it's pretty easy once you have your server set up to access it from just about any device. This is Jellyfin Mobile in the iOS App Store. This is a client viewer that you can use to access your Jellyfin server that you set up. It has very good ratings. It's got a 4.4 as you can see. And it will let you access everything on the server that you set up. And it's free, just like the server. So that's one way you could view your movies or hear your audiobooks, listen to your music, or listen to your podcasts right on your iPad or iPhone. Once you have Jellyfin 
installed on your iPad or iPhone. It's just a matter of starting it up. Here it is. We'll go to the first screen and you can see the first thing it asks for is your server address. So I'm going to put the address in that we set up our server on. And don't forget the colon and the port number and we'll hit go. And it takes us into our server. Now, since we've already set up the server, we don't have to reset it up from here, just have to sign in. So our sign in was studio. And also you can you can put any name in there you want or add extra users. And we sign in, we'll get rid of the keyboard. Now, you see here, iPad supports audiobooks and books where on the video I created for the Roku, it doesn't support audiobooks, but you can still put movies, music, and podcasts. In fact, if you want to put audiobooks on the Roku, you can, since there are most of them, most of them are MP3s, you could put them in with the music or the podcasts. So, there we are, there's our chapters. And we can watch or listen to audiobooks right here. I wanted to show you how to install the Jellyfin server on the Roku box. Actually, I have a Roku TV. So if you go down to the streaming store, and do a search and it looked like I was here before searching for Jellyfin. Click on that and say add channel. Channel was added and now we'll open the channel and the first thing it will ask you to do is to set up a server, connect your server as you can see, I have two servers set up. This is my Raspberry Pi server, but this is the one we set up on my desktop. So we'll select that and hit submit. And if you remember, we had our name of studio set up. We need a capital S, but probably won't matter. S Hit OK. We don't need a password. We didn't save one. We'll save our credentials and hit submit. And there's uh, some news. And there we are. Now one, one thing, one last thing I wanted to show you on here. There is no audiobook library. Upon checking, I found out that the Roku app does not support audiobooks at this time. I don't know if they will or not, but you can always put your audiobooks in with your play and with your podcasts or your music. Since most of the audiobooks are MP3 files, so you could go in podcasts or music. And that's how to set it up on your Roku. A few of my final items I like to show you are 
adding users, setting up your firewall, and talking about setting up a static IP address for your server. If we go to the Jellyfin main page and click on the menu here, we can go to Dashboard. Under Dashboard, you see Users. Well, right now we only have one user on this test server I set up, but if you click the plus sign, you can add another user. We'll call it Billy Walt. Billy. Now you can you can determine the access that this user has. If you want them to only see music, you can click that. But to enable all access, you just click the top and say save. And this gives you all the other items you can give them access to. So there's our second user, Billy. And we can go back here. Sign out from Studio and put Billy in. And now we're signed in under Billy. If you go to your settings to the network status page, you can type in, well, you can do it from any page actually, but you can type in firewall and go to firewall network protection. You can see you have private network, which is active in public network firewall is on. Right below that it says allow an app through the firewall. Now this will allow you to either block an app from coming through your either private, which is your local network, or your public, which is your internet access. If you see here, we'll go down, it looks like it's in alphabetical order. We'll go down to Jellyfin. You notice Jellyfin is checked to be allowed to access. But I only have it set up here for private, which means it's only available for my local network. If you wanted to change these settings, you click change, then you have the ability to change the settings. But I think I will leave, leave the settings the way they are. And if we hit OK, that'll make the settings however you last changed them. Jellyfin.org has a quick start guide and there's a lot of good tips here. One thing you can notice is that if we go down there's installation hints which we've gone through most, most of. Now here's one we set the access through the firewall in the settings, but you may get a prompt like this when you install Jellyfin. And if you allow access, and you can see, I would check private network here. I would switch this, I would click the private 
and take the public off, and then click Allow Access. The other thing you might do is set up a static IP address for your server. The way I demonstrated it, I just took the IP address of whatever the router assigned, but doesn't guarantee it's going to have that same IP address every time. If you go to your settings in your router, and most of them are very, are very similar, you need to go to the DHCP settings and set up a, an IP address that doesn't change. And either here or in your router documentation, you could see how to do that. So this is the end of my video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section. If there's anything I missed, I'd be glad to get back to you and let you know what you need. It was a pleasure making this video because I have the Jellyfin server. It is a good replacement for the Plex server. I also have a Plex server running, but it's much more complex and goes out on the internet. I chose Jellyfin because I wanted to keep my mainly my audio books on my network locally and I actually I have it installed on a router that doesn't have internet access. So I can get to my Jellyfin from all my devices in my home and not have to worry about router access to the internet. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully you'll like, subscribe, give comments. I will leave some links in the com in the comment section in the description section actually on some of the things I've shown you here. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day, a great week, a great weekend, and we'll see you again. Bye.